Hi, and welcome to NC Bold 2023. My name is Dave Ann Brigman, and I'm a media specialist in Bladen County Schools. And what you have embarked on now is a little adventure we're calling, What Do You Mean I Can't Just Google It? And this presentation is going to take us down a very interesting road today. Before we get started, I do recommend that you open another tab where you can open the presentation and have access to the slides in the presentation so that you can interact with the, with the presentation itself. Also, you may open another tab to log in to your NC Ed Cloud. We will need access to your NC Ed Cloud apps. Now, I will pause for a moment and you can pause this video in order to open up those two extra tabs. Okay, welcome back. Why is research such a mystery? Why can't we just Google it? Well, lots of reasons. But first of all, Google is a profit-based business. So when we Google something, it gives us a bazillion results. And how often do we really get past the first page? And on that first page, the ones that are there, my students tell me when I ask them this question, what's on that first page? And they say the best ones. Well, that is not necessarily true. While some of them may be very good and very relevant, because Google is a profit-based business, it's all about which ones are making them the most money. So there's that. Plus, whenever we just Google something, you and I know this because we Google things all the time and I love Google. I Google all the time. So I'm not a Google hater. But when it comes to helping my students focus their learning, try to steer clear because as we know, Google can take you down a rabbit hole or two or three or 20 or 30 at any given moment. And there's ads everywhere. There's pop ups. And what about safety? What about being able to keep our students on appropriate websites, not them going off on tangents that take them to places they don't need to be? So that's why I'm staying away from Google. But then, then what? So why is research such a mystery? Well, I'd like for you to tell me. So if you can take a moment to, and you can pause this video while you do it, um, but you're gonna click on that link at the bottom. It will take you to my Padlet. Let's scoot on over to online attendees and add your thoughts. Think about it as a teacher. Think about it as a student. Why is it such a mystery? Why is it so hard? Why is it so huge? And why can we not focus in and be able to know where to even start? Think about some of the questions that your students may have and also yourself. And once you have done that, then you can pause the video now. But once you have done that, please rejoin me back in our presentation. So in order for us to solve this mystery, we're going to play a little, play a little game. Your students request the honor of your presence in solving this great mystery. This is not a jigsaw kind of a game. This is a clue kind of a game. So this whole research process can be so big and so daunting. We're going to solve this mystery with a game of Clue. Let's see how we play. First of all, the number of players is unlimited. Me, you, your students, their families, the world. I mean, it can be anybody in this, in this whole effort that we're doing right now. Our game pieces and strategy are gonna be the most challenging part for us because you have to familiarize yourself with it. It's the Super 3 and the Big 6 research strategies. You're gonna be selecting one or both of these to make a copy for yourself, and those are gonna be your game pieces for the rest of the game. Your game board is gonna be visiting each room in the mansion and solving a quick riddle to click on your clue. And when we follow the clues, it's just gonna help us learn more and solve the great research mystery. So, are we ready? We review the rules of the game. Let's get started. Please do not be intimidated by the screen. <laughs> do not be intimidated by these game pieces that are now yours. What you're seeing are components of the Super 3 and the Big 6 research processes, which were created by Mike Eisenberg and Robert Berkowitz back in the 90s. In the early 2000s, I did have the good fortune of being trained by Mike Eisenberg himself, along with the other media coordinators in my county, in the Big 6 research process. The Super 3 and the Big 6 
our research strategies. I know, I hear crickets right now. I can feel your eye rolls and I know that research processes and strategies are oftentimes dry as cracker juice to try to learn and teach. So that's not how we're going to do it. Um, we're going to do this in a very interactive fashion and I can't wait for us to get started. This infographic is just going to give you the basics so that you can go back and refer to it at any time. But there are two tools on this page. Up in the left hand corner you see Super 3 Worksheet and in the bottom right hand corner you see Big 6 Worksheet. You may click on either one of those or both of those whenever you're ready to make a copy for yourself. You do not need to do that right now because I'm going to show you both of them. But you will make a copy for yourself and that is something that you can use in a print version or as an interactive document to share with your students. These are both because you're making a copy completely customizable. They are completely yours. You'll be able to share them and use them however you see fit with your students based on your students and their needs and your classroom environment. Whatever the assignment is, you just make it your own. Use them in parts, use them as a whole. Whatever it is, it's totally about making it your own and about choice and voice. Not just for your students, guys, that's for you too. Choice and voice. So. Before we take a peek, note that I have a teacher in my building. He's a social studies, eighth grade social studies teacher, and he uses the big six and he breaks it up into pieces for his students. He never just gives it to a student and says, here, let's do this. Let's check all these things off because it's not a grocery list. It's an interactive process. And so he gives them each a piece of the process at a time for them to complete. So it is um, a very, very fun process for them to use whenever they're doing research. So let's back out of this for just a moment and go to the Super 3 Worksheet. The Super 3 Worksheet is basically the ability for someone to have a conversation with themselves um, and with you as the teacher so that they can make their goals, come up with educational goals, plan their research process, identify what it is that they want to do, and it's broken up into three parts, basically the beginning and the middle and the end, or in more research terms, a plan process, the doing process, and the review. The doing process is pretty straightforward. You're doing the activity, you're reading, you're viewing, um, they're taking notes, they're making some kind of final product, but the planning part, the beginning is what's so important. What needs to happen? And this is where you can conference with them about the educational goals for them for that particular learning project. And the end is something we need to teach them to do. And that is to go back and reflect. Did I do what I was supposed to do? Do I feel proud of this? And this is something they need to learn. We had to learn it. Whereas as adults, we're very deadline driven in that we have something we have to do. We check off the list. We have a deadline. We, we're done. We turn it in and that's it. And to go back and reflect is something we have to make a very deliberate action. And so we need to teach our students how to do this as well. The big six is the exact same process, but a little more involved in terms of the documentation. Again, this is something that you can print out and do in a print format, break it up into parts, um, share this with your students so that they can just interactively populate this on their own computers. But this is, this takes those steps that we just saw and breaks them down a little more specifically. You can see here, this one is um, listing their main question. What is the research question? And following that, I, I improvise this a little bit myself by setting this up as an area for you to conference with your student to set up educational goals. Consult with your teacher to create your learning goals for this project. You don't have to have five. I just, I just put five spaces. It can be whatever, because like I said, this is yours. It's customizable. The second step, their information seeking strategies. If you want to front load any resources you want them to use, this is an excellent place to do that. It's also an excellent place for students to list their own resources. And I remind them to list print resources and also human resources. What if there's a professional that they're going to interview for the information? Um, they can include that information here and it has everything in one place. This is a linear representation of a very interactive and circular process, but it keeps everything in one place. 
location and access, where are you going to go to find the information that you need? This just helps them kind of brainstorm where they're going to go to find these things and the keywords they might use for their searches if they're using online sources. You and I both know that keywords is an interesting thing for kids. Um, if I were to tell students, I need to do research on German Shepherds, what is my keyword going to be? How, how am I going to look it up? The first word is going to be dogs. <laughs> well, no, that'll be about a bazillion hits for that. So need teaching them how to construct very specific keywords. This, this is a good place. This is a good point to come back, circle back and do some more conferencing and kind of finding out where they are in their process. How are they going to use the information? Are they going to take notes on paper? Are they going to make, do you want them to use note cards? Do you want them to use a Google Doc or some slides? Whatever version you want them, this is yours and also how, and theirs. How to create, how to give credit to their sources. That's going to follow your guidelines as the classroom teacher. But this um, method of them collecting the information, this should be a point that fuses your expectations as well as their needs. So it can be very fluid and very flexible. Synthesis, same thing. This is what is the final product going to look like. And this will be, again, kind of a fusion of you, your expectations and their creativity and their ideas um, and materials they'll need for their presentation. I include this box because um, I'm, I have two grown kids and I spent many a night at Walmart at 11 o'clock getting things that my children needed for projects that were due the next day. So this allows them to plan and be more intentional about their research. If they go ahead and make a materials list, then they'll see what items you have there at school they can use, and then they can share those materials with their teacher, with their parents so that they can get things um, and bring them from home. How much time do I estimate it will take? for these different components of the process. I recommend making this a conversational piece to do with students because it helps them be intentional about the process. Most of the time we just kind of fly through it and 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 it's like a bull in a china shop. We're just kind of banging around and and dropping things and and things are things are happening and something might be, get missed. This is a good way to plan it out so that you can devote your time and use it efficiently and remember that it is a process. So, and the, the end is just like the, the super three reflecting is my final product. Does it answer my main question? Does it answer the supporting questions and meet my educational goals? Did I give credit to my sources? Um, is my work neat? Um, would I be proud of this? Of anyone seeing this? This is all a matter of reflection. And these, my friends, are your game pieces. I have added a resource at the end of this presentation that will enable you to kind of review this process for yourself or even it's a slideshow that you can even use to teach your students about the process, to teach other teachers, maybe even show to your admin if you want to see this process adopted by your school. Our district adopted the Big Six, um, you know, years ago so that we would have a consistent research strategy throughout the district at all schools at all levels. So it's, it's a good idea to do that. Also, I have also added a link at the end where they have created different language versions of the big six. So this helps you as an outreach to your families. Right here, we've already addressed how students are going to interact with the content, even how the students are going to interact with you as y'all goal set and in conference throughout to sort of assess where you are. But also, this allows you to have the students be able to communicate this with their families at home if there are multi-language learners. Um, or families um, in your classroom. So see, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it just seems like a lot when you're glancing at it. But let's go ahead and move to our next step. Now we're going to play the game. But this still doesn't tell us which sources to use. It tells us where it goes and have the steps. But how do we keep ourselves and our students out of the Google abyss? Well, first, let me point out that all of the resources in this game are located in your, yours and your students' NC Ed Cloud accounts as apps. You're going to see that. I'm going to show you that visual as we go. They were formerly accessible through NC Wise Owl, but they are now housed ever so conveniently in your NC Ed Cloud accounts. 
Now, I know that sometimes we see things there and we're not sure what they are, so we just kind of ignore them. Well, if you've been ignoring them, then this is your chance to take a look. Um, even my assistant principal told me when we were discussing this earlier that he said he saw things there and he didn't know what they were, so he figured he better not click on them, didn't know, you know, you point of no return what would happen if you click on things so this is your chance to click on things click on all the things and let's learn all the things we're going to start with our first clue um, and this is going to take us to our first resource which is part of the NCA cloud apps which are equal access to everyone all the time anywhere you have an internet connection they are maintained, updated, vetted by North Carolina Department of Public Instruction and other, other educators. So here's what we're going to do to get started. You're going to take a moment and pause the video so that you can read this riddle and pause it while you solve by deciding what you need to click on within this frame to lead you to the next clue. So once you have clicked on this, once you solve the riddle and clicked on the item in this picture and it takes you to the next slide. Come back and join me. Okay, welcome back. Around the world, I was hoping that that in the globe would be pretty intuitive, so, so glad you figured that one out. Our first resource is Britannica School. This one is actually my favorite, my absolute favorite. And I want to take us into my NC Ed Cloud so you can see what it looks like up at the top. See all these all these apps? I mean, I'm sure that you wondered what some of them are for. But this one, Britannica Staff, even though it says Britannica Staff, this is what it looks like for kids, too, when they open it. You'll see this screen. We have the options here. We can already from point one decide if it's elementary, middle, or high and go in that direction. One thing to point out from the beginning, which is one of the reasons I like this one so much, is that it is the cone of safety. This does not send you outward into all, all sorts of places and sites that are outside of, of this particular resource. So I like that a lot. That helps me with younger learners. It helps me with not so younger learners that may have issues with having distractions. They need a little more focus, a little more structure. I want to click middle just to keep us kind of in the middle of things. Boom, right at the beginning it says you can start typing, but we're not going to do that. Let's go ahead and look at the homepage a little bit. Um, there are hot topics on this homepage. I recommend spending some time letting the kids just explore on this resource before using it and this gives you some really interesting things that they can look at to explore there's hot topics there's video of the week there's certain collections that they may be interested in kind of did you know factual you know interesting things this just allows them to explore i do like these content based um, collections down below as well the countries and territories world atlas primary resources it's, it's almost like ready reference, that reference collection we used to have in our libraries where you just walk in and grab the encyclopedia and boom, you're right there. That's kind of what this page is like. It's like ready reference right there at the beginning, which is interesting because this is an encyclopedia or based on a print version. But let's go ahead and start typing. Now I'm going to just type in a keyword. Remember that keyword is part of our, our, our big six worksheet. Now I'm going to choose ice cream because July is National Ice Cream Month. Ice cream, if I Google it, I get 1,420,000,000 hits. Not here. If I scroll down to the bottom, I've got about four or five pages worth of, of items. And they are actually in order of relevance. So looking at this I have this article these articles right here in front of me I want to click on this first article now that it has pulled up I want to show you a few little features just to get you started you can see that this article is a level two a reading level two there is a reading level three and most articles have a level one two or three I like that differentiation for two reasons I like it for me because if I have a particular class if my classes are ability based and I have a classroom that has you know my real high flyers who need more challenges I can give them a higher level version of this particular article if I have students who are struggling I can give them 
um, a level two or level one version of the content, which just changes the vocabulary, um, the visual representation of the content, maybe the length of the article. It just does things that are going to make it a little more um, reading level appropriate for your particular audience. What I like for the students is if the student needs to do that, they can do it at any time and nobody needs to know. No one wants to be called out because they need a less challenging version of something. So this allows them to do it and no one will ever, ever know. That is very valuable in my book. So on this page, you can see there are going to be articles, images, videos, anything in here can be used for research. It is part of our um, responsibilities for ethical behavior towards intellectual property, something you can teach and have this conversation with your students. But also within this, you do not have to feel like you might be violating um, any kind of copyright law because if it is in here, you do have the rights for students to use it for their own informational and research purposes. Up here, we have options of what you can do with this article. And like I said, this students see this the same way. So when I say you, right now I mean you as a teacher and you as a student. When you click send to, it can be sent to your email or put in your Google Drive. Or if your district still does Google Classroom, then you can send it to your Google Classroom. Also, you just print it out. Citations. Having that discussion about our ethical responsibility for intellectual property it gives me the citation. What a wonderful way to start teaching students this responsibility. And you can customize this to the version that you want. Doesn't Chicago manual style just take you back? That just makes me think of grad school. Whew. So there's those different versions that'll help you out. It gives it to you right there. And um, some people say that's doing the work for you. Well, I think it's using my resources. So moving to the next one, translate. If you have students who speak another language or they have another language in the home that is spoken, this gives you an option of preparing an article for them that can be read in their home language. Um, I am in a very rural, small district, so I don't get a lot of exotic um, languages spoken in the home, but I do have a very large Hispanic population and I have had um, um, students from India, students from Germany before, so you just never know what you may need. And that gives you, as you saw, a plethora of options. I can have this read aloud to me. It's going to be a robot voice. It's not going to be in a happy, sing-songy kind of storytelling voice, but it does provide that listening option that helps support your learners who may need to hear it as well as see it as far as the information. You can alter the font size on your articles. That's good for student preferences or maybe a student has a slight visual impairment that it would benefit them to alter how the article looks. And just like I said about images and things, anything in here can be used for student research purposes. All right, let's get back to our presentation. All right, you can see on this version, when I make it big, you won't be able to see it. But um, there's a next clue button at the bottom. Right now, you can pause the video if you would like time to explore this resource a little more thoroughly, or you can select next clue to continue. The next clue button is right behind my face. Face is in front of it. Okay, now we have moved to our second room of the mansion to look for answers you must play by the book i've got everything just take a look you can solve this riddle and select the proper place on a proper item on this page and then it will take you to the next clue so if you would like to pause and take a moment join back when you reach the next slide Okay, very good. Doing things by the book. You clicked on the books. Excellent choice. This is Explora or EBSCO Explora, and this is like super comprehensive, just everything. And that's why I put it's all here because it really kind of is all here. So let me show you where that is in your applications. Right here it says EBSCO staff. Again, right from the beginning, you're going to be asked to choose a level. So we have the grade levels, and I'm going to choose six through eight just to kind of keep it sort of in the middle. Now, in the past, this particular tool was 
very unfriendly. There was just nothing visually appealing about it. It looked like a database, just like a listing of words and articles and links. And it was just very, very dry and very, and it took a lot of search parameters to be specified to get to things. So it's way more user friendly now. So when your kids see this, this looks a little bit like the Britannica with the hot topics, the, you know, different particular um, content areas they may choose to explore, but also right up here at the top, what are you looking for? So just like the other one, I won't spend a lot of time on this. If I look up ice cream again, it does give me these options. This one though, however, you can see eBooks in this particular result. See this, this gives you more than the other one did. This gives you 46,749 options, but that is better than 1,420,000,000. So, you know, there's that, <laughs> but here's some eBooks. Um, let me take you to the article. And if I want to click on this, I look down here and it does give me access options. I can choose an online full text, which I want to tell you, this looks like a typewritten document. Or I can choose a PDF, which is going to look exactly like it did when it was published in Scholastic News. So let me just do that quick PDF to show you. Now I say quick, but then my computer is going to take a couple of minutes. <laughs> see, it looks just like it did in that. And see how current we are? That was May, June issue of 2023. So it gives you the article just like it appeared in that publication. I find that very useful. And this, like I, I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but in EBSCO, you are not in the cone of safety. This can take you to other websites and things outside of um, NC Ed Cloud. So just be mindful of that. And EBSCO actually gives you that little reminder here at the top. It says that links can redirect you to a non-EBSCO site. So keep that in mind. Um, and this might be a good opportunity for you to make use of your monitoring programs that your district may have. We have GoGuardian so that we can see the students' um, screens, you know, as they're working. So this will be a good time to kind of monitor that. Also, at the bottom of, let's see where to go. There we go. At the bottom of this article, it does remind you that as a user, you may print, download, or email articles for individual use. So this does point out that for student informational purposes, these, these articles and, and resources may be used. It has the same, many of the same options as the other. Um, you can email, you can send to Google Classroom, you can send your Google Drive, you can print. There's a citation um, option. Um, so there are many, many things on in this one that's very similar to the Britannica, although Britannica is still my favorite. I'm, I'm learning to like this one a little bit more now as well. But if you'll scroll down to the bottom of your app screen, you'll see resources toolkit. Let's click on that because I included that on my slide. The reason I included that is because this is something that is not only seen by you, but can be seen by parents and students. And there are many resources here for them. And there's like the three minute videos that show them how to use these resources that can be very, very useful um, for you to use in the classroom or for them to be able to go home and kind of reinforce their own learning um, by having them view those videos. But also let's click on educators for just a moment. You're about to see like many, 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 many things. Many, 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 many things. More than we could do right here today. So that's okay. Don't worry. We're not going to try, but I do want to take you to one particular place, Lesson Scavenger Hunt some more. I want you to see a place where there are some teacher tools that, especially if I was, when I was a beginning teacher, I would have loved to have had this. Um, I remember over the years, we've had so many different trainings. There was thinking maps. There was um, many different reading programs. And so I would have loved to have had some things right at my fingertips without having to create things on my own. When I click on graphic organizers, you can see that they have a number of options available that are specific to certain content or they are certain types like a cause and effect map, comparing sources, but there's also just basic like an idea web inference chart. Um, there's like a KWHL um, chart. So these are right here at your fingertips that you can just download and use, um, you know, digitally or print. 
So that's just one of the many things that are available in that toolkit. And like I said, that's actually accessible to everyone, um, parents, students, and teachers. So at this point, I would like for you to pause if you would like time to explore, explore some of these resources. Um, but if you want to wait and do that at another time, then you can go ahead and select next clue to continue. But again, if you need to pause it, now is a great time to pause it and take a look. All right, our next clue. Sharing our resources is such a delight. Join the fun and you will learn something. All right. Um, well, if you would just pause the video for a moment while you follow, while you solve the clue, click on the item you feel like it's leading you to and play the video once you have reached the next slide. And welcome back. This one is such a treasure. And I don't know how many people really know about it. I don't think it's broadcast as much as it should be and shared as much as it should be. But this is Go Open NC. And it this is just a teacher um, a teacher option. It's also an NC Cloud, but it's not accessible from the student NC at Cloud. But it's still worth the, the time we're going to spend for just a moment because within this database things you can things can be accessed by you vetted shared with your students you know you can kind of curate some things from here that you want to use with your students as they you know conduct their own research so let's go to your apps and you can see go open and see Everything in this resource is created by educators for educators. And you can see right here from the very beginning that you can search in many, for many different parameters. You can just go all in and just do a keyword search. You can search by subject on the level, um, a certain standard, and you can even do advanced searching. So you can look for things based on that. If you want some lists, you want some tutorials on how to navigate this system as the best you can, then here's some videos. They're pretty short. They're about five minutes each. Well, this one's real short. It's about three minutes, but this will enable you to sort of see what it's all about because this is all about educators across the state who have shared their own resources and things that they have created in a way that makes it open to all of us to use. So others have graciously created and shared. It's, it's like in Canvas when you have the Creative Commons. Um, I kind of akin that a little bit to that. And um, but this is it's got a number of options. Down here at the bottom, you will see certain collections. There are certain collections curated by digital librarians. There's um, textbooks and even courses. Also, STEM literacy and bright futures. One thing that I really like is back at the top is looking at personalizing my own experiences by joining groups. There are different groups and I've joined school library media coordinators and go open explorers. I've, there are hubs that can be joined as well. And here's when I see all the hubs that takes me to some that are, that I'm going to kind of call out to you. This gives you a little bit of a social aspect to uh, using this resource. And I think about um, the many things that are on here and there's the NCVR adventures. Those are virtual reality adventures that have been created by teachers. I'm actually finishing up on myself. That's going to be published to this particular um, collection. Um, so virtual reality adventures taking you on taking you to places that maybe your students don't get to go and learning about them that way. But also the Rethink Education Blended Learning Hub. This is a ton of resources for teachers and parents on blended learning and how um, and how those um, things can be and the supports that you can have in order to be able to conduct blended learning effectively in your classroom. Um, Project-based learning. I'll tell you this web, this um, tool right here, go up and see, it's, it's like a PBL for grownups um, as it is. So um, take the time right now, if you would like to pause this video so that you can explore this resource. Um, but if you choose and time is of essence for you right now, we can go back and you may go to the next clue. Pull up a chair and let's begin. They learn when we learn. So let's jump right on in. 
So if you would like to pause, please solve the riddle. And once you have clicked and moved to the next um, clue, I'll join you back there. All right, welcome back. This clue, and please forgive any strange noises. They're putting new systems in our school as far as fire and other things. So they're drilling and doing lots of things. So this resource has everything North Carolina in it, everything. And I don't mean that it's just things about North Carolina. So please don't think that when you look at this resource, these are not just things about North Carolina, but things that were created by us in North Carolina. So housed in this app, let's go take a look and see what it looks like in your NC Ed Cloud. North Carolina Educator Resources. This is what it looks like right here. And you will see that there are numbers and numbers of options, just like there was in Go Open and See. And there's the PBS Learning. Um, here you can create your own free account so that you can save things and kind of create your own learning experiences. There's the at home learning resources. Can anyone remember this little thing we used to call remote learning? Whew, that sure would have been nice. So, um, yeah, I didn't think anybody would remember that. Um, all of these different available resources. I'm just kind of slow scrolling so you can see them. I mean, NCpedia is on here, NC Learn. There's way too many options in this app to explore in one sitting or maybe even in one day. But this is where it is all about your classroom and what you need and what your students need. Students have access to most of this in there. Um, in their NC Ed Cloud, and I'll show you that in just a moment. In fact, everything we've looked at so far, except for the Go Open NC, has um, has been in also in the student NC Ed Cloud. Let's back out of this. Okay. All right. So at this point, if you would. If you choose to, you may pause so that you can explore these resources. If you saw some things that caught your eye right now and you want to take a look at, let's go take a look at them. But if you choose to do that at another time and would like to progress to the next clue, then you may click next clue at this time. All right. So the kitchen, we are in the kitchen. Follow the recipe for success. Seek your answers and always try your best. All right, please pause for a moment while you solve that riddle. And once you have successfully clicked on your clue to move to your next clue, then I'll join you there. Okay, now we're on the North Carolina Student Resources. As I mentioned, many of them are the same as the NC Educator Resources, but I really like this collection of resources for students. Let me show you a couple of things that I did not highlight in the original, but we have access to this so we can see what they see, North Carolina Student Resources. I like it when we can see what they see because it really helps us plan and be able to maybe kind of guide and curate sources for them. But when you look at this, it looks very similar, doesn't it? The NC Kids Digital Library, there are over 48,000 ebooks and audiobooks in this particular app alone. And it, it contains collections that are searchable. I mean, I just really, really like this particular tool. And I'm going to open it up because I want you to see one more thing. Okay. You can see the ebooks that are there and you can see many things are kind of highlighted, different topics. And it's not just the little picture books because if you move on down, I mean, well, you don't see it on the screen, but you can search based on reading levels and there are um, and subjects collections. But I know Harry Potter books are in here and things like that for our older readers. There's, there's all the levels are represented. But if you click on these little book right here. Please sign in. This is where you can sign in to your own local public library. You select your library. For me, that would be Bladen County Public Library. And then all I had to do is enter in my card number for my library card. 
So all you need in order to have this local access, this connection to your community, we've had students interacting with content, students interacting with their teacher, students interacting with their parents. Now we have students interacting with their community. This is this is just this and this one resource alone, we've been able to to touch on all these things. So if you are not sure if your students have library cards or not, I would like to encourage you just to call your local librarian because they are more than happy to come to your school and they'll conduct like a library card drive and, and their staff will be there to help families sign up for a library card. I would also suggest though, enlisting an interpreter to join you at that event to assist in case you have any, you know, multi-language classes, I mean, classroom students or households. Now, at this point, if you would like to explore this tool or the others that are located within that, um, that one collection for student and see student resources, please pause the video at this time so that you can explore. Otherwise, if you choose to continue, then please select and finally in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. This slide addresses two components of our game pieces, how we're collecting and how we're presenting our information. Remember, it's all about you and your student and your communication, your goal setting, your conferencing throughout because things change. When I mentioned this was a, our game pieces were linear, but they were circular because you keep circling back, making changes, making adjustments, choosing how you're going to do things. But this is, this is the ultimate in flexibility and customizability. How would you like for your students to collect your information or present it? How would they like to collect it and present it to you? So this is all about the final product for them. You can create a rubric in order to address your expectations to assess the final products, but this is a great opportunity for students to have their voice heard and to have choices in how they seek and share their learning with you. So those are just some ideas that I put up on the slide. You know, there's the obvious Google Docs and slides, drawings, handwritten notes, posters or sketch notes. And if you have not used sketch notes before, it is a wonderfully creative outlet for students to be able to visually represent information that they have found as well as maybe arrange it like a graphic organizers or add words to pictures like captioning. It's just a wonderful tool and very and a very creative outlet. Graphic organizers, a presentation board. Kids can write a song or a poem. They can write a skit and act it out. Um, it can be individual or group. I mean, the, the options are, are limitless. So let's move next. Congratulations. The mystery solved. <laughs> you have you have the game pieces that guide your students through their goal setting, seeking their information, choosing how to best present their learning through the super three and the big six print and digital format. You've reviewed numerous sources for your for your students and their families and yourself that are all housed in one place, the NC Ed Cloud, which is accessible by each and every student and teacher in North Carolina. These resources check all of our boxes. They're current, reliable, vetted, they're safe, accurate. They allow us to differentiate. And now that you have reviewed these sources, that can be a model for you as you're looking at outside sources that you may choose as you browse online. Now, you can use this knowledge that you've discovered to help guide how you want to conduct your big six or super three worksheet for your students to use. And if you're still wary of kind of using outside resources, I have included a guide at the end of my presentation to assist you in um, selecting appropriate sites. You are meeting standards right now, today, and even more than what I've listed on this page. I have some standards from the International Society for Technology and Education. This was adopted for the student standards were adopted by North Carolina Department of Public Instruction in 2021. And as you can see, they're knowledge constructors. Students critically curate a variety of resources using digital tools to construct knowledge, produce creative artifacts, and make meaningful learning experiences for themselves and others. We just did every bit of that. Every bit of that was addressed in what you've learned today. For yourself, also, you have been the learner and you've learned how to facilitate learning. 
On the right side, I have also included the North Carolina DPI Digital Learning Initiative goal number one. These goals were revised in 2022, saying that all staff has access to and can use digital content that is continually vetted and aligns with curriculum and assessment expectations for student learning ability levels. You can see how the things we did today address that on every on every level, all of those things. These are just a few of the ways that we've met some of these standards. Now, I want to take you to my final page with learn with more resources because if you, as you can see at the bottom, I have included links to the um, International Society for Technology and Education, also known as ISTE, I S T E, and um, you can review all of their standards. They have standards for students and for teachers and for administrators. And um, there's so you can take a look at those standards and see, you know, where you are and what goals you may want to set personally. NCDPI Digital Learning Initiative, there's a link to that so you can see, you know, what we're expecting as far as what's expected of us as schools and as districts and leadership in North Carolina. I have also included, um, sorry, I have also included the big six translations, as you can see at the top, because that will give you the option of sharing the big six with families who may have different languages spoken in the home. A big six presentation. This is a presentation you can use for yourself just to kind of refresh your memory or use it with your students or your teachers or stakeholders. You know, just make a copy of it and that way you can you can choose how you want to use it and you can even customize it to meet your needs as best you can. Guidelines to assess website reliability. I did pull from a study that was done um, in 2012 in order to give you some guidelines and ways that you can help yourself and your students learn how to assess website reliability if you choose to go outside of the NC Ed Cloud um, bubble <laughs> to access some resources. Also, if you like, the escape room or game approach that I used today. I added a video link for how to create your own digital escape room. It can be as simple or as elaborate as you like. It can have timers and things like that. It does, this particular video I'm sharing with you does assume a basic knowledge of Google Slides. And even though I'm super familiar with, you know, Google Workspaces features, it did give me some ideas on how to set up and visually represent my own game. The videographer, she also has follow-up videos on how to do the same thing using Google Sites and some other demonstrations. So it's worth taking a look and kind of maybe looking at some of her other materials as well. And finally, please reach out if you have any questions or need further support in the research process or the use of the resources shared today. I have really enjoyed our time together today and I hope that you really enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Have a great day.